for those who haven't seen catfish, what would be your sort of elevator uh, deal? Uh, I would just say it's it's the very unexpected result of an internet relationship between myself and um, a family in Michigan that starts off incredibly innocent and charming and and turns into a very complicated um, and emotional sort of well there's a compl there's a twist that takes us to a very complicated and emotional place where we discover that the people I had thought I was talking to were vastly different than than they actually were. How long was that brewing before you were shooting? Oh, uh, the documentary. The doc. Fish. Well, yeah, the it doc. didn't brew. Well, okay. The process of that documentary happening was very organic. I was sharing an office with my brother and our friend Henry, who are filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was in the filmmaking space doing documentary sort of videography, weddings, bar mitzvahs, stuff like that. And I started uh, under no expectation of a documentary, a friendship with this family in Michigan, in the UP. And it was just funny and weird and interesting. And I would mention it to my brother because we were sharing an office. And I think after the third or fourth time, I sort of mentioned what was happening. And as it got more interesting and a little bit weirder, he just instinctively thought, I'm going to capture some of this. This is interesting and and. Neve tends to kind of have things happen that are camera worthy. So as I would turn around and read an email or open a box that they would send me, he would just put his little, you know, mini cam on, film it, and then download that to a hard drive and store it away. And we never had a plan for it. It was just his sort of funny little collection of clips of Neve and his friends in Michigan. And then it wasn't until after eight months of that relationship that things got weird. And my brother thought, we, whoa, I, what's, this, is so, this is stranger than I thought and could go somewhere. We should really turn our cameras on and like actually make an effort to film whatever happens next. And in doing so, we decided it was then time to fly to the UP, meet these people in person, and record that experience. And it turned out to be so unusual and unexpected that they then realized, oh my God, we can tell this whole story with all these clips that we have from the past eight months and now this footage from this weekend that we spent there. And um, in putting this together and, you know, you see you like going up that, that on that first night or yeah. whatever and then kind of it, it, it gets deeper and I won't ruin it for people who, who want to check it out, but was there a certain point where you guys n knew like, oh, we for sure have something like, did you have your turning moment? Did we kind of witness that? Yeah, I think you see it in the doc. I mean, basically what happened was they had told me all these things over the months. I had never thought to question it, just sort of taking them at face value. And then one thing became clear that it was fake or a lie. So then we just started looking into other things. And the more we did that, the more we realized, wait, that's not, that's not, a, they lied about this and this. What else, like if, if they lied about all these things, are they lying about everything? Um, and so that was the moment where we thought, okay, we should we should go there. Mm -hmm. And I think that was kind of the the turning point. When yeah. We decided we were just going to show up. And did you expect, I guess, sort of the reaction that it got and how it spurred into a television show? I mean, could you see that coming? Or no, I mean, this... I didn't. I didn't even really because I was so kind of burnt out from having just had the experience and having just had the sort of letdown of it ending awkwardly and, and not how I'd hoped that I didn't really want to have anything to do with the doc. So for, for me, this sort of experience ended when we got home from Michigan and for my brother and his friend Henry, the, like the excitement had just begun because mm -hmm. they just realized, Oh my God, we've got this, you know, project now that we can start editing. And I didn't really want to have anything to do with it. And they kept asking me all these questions and I had to keep giving them like, e they had to keep going into my email to pull out more things. Like it was annoying for me because mm -hmm. I was, sad and kind of over it. And then they were editing it and then they submitted it to the f festivals and it got into Sundance and I had never been to Sundance. I didn't really know it was a big deal, but apparently, you know, it obviously yeah. is. Um, and so when it went to Sundance, I thought, okay, cool, fun. Like, let this will be, it'll be a little it, Sundance indie film and that'll be the end of it. But then it was a hit at Sundance and then it came out in theaters and like the whole time, every, every 
step of the way, I couldn't believe this sort of embarrassing, weird thing that had happened to me was kept getting bigger and bigger and turning into more and more. And then it was like a, we pitched a show. And at that point, I thought, okay, cool. This Now I have a job. This could be a job for me. Mm-hmm. That I, that part that was when I sort of was into it. Yeah, <laughs> when you're like, now I can. <laughs> yeah, I was like, officially monetize. I don't know it. what else I'm going to do with my life, but <laughs> maybe I'll make a TV show. And 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 then here I am now, twelve years later, still making the show. Yeah, which is crazy, and I still can't believe that. I mean, every time they order more, I just <laughs> can't believe it. So roll out the barrel and get the band brewing. Life's got you down. Just keep her moving. 